winner gets $160,000 and we're in first place. All I have to do is keep it. I'm in Taipei, Taiwan right now. For the first time in my life, 100% of my income comes from poker. Not by choice, messed up my settings on YouTube. I made zero dollars last month. And even worse, I have a one month old son that I need to take care of. I love him more than anything. I love poker and I love filmmaking, but you gotta pay the bills to take care of your family. I have a tournament in 30 minutes. I need to get ready for it. The buy-in is $2,700 and this is my second to last tournament of this series. If you watch part one, you know it's not going very well. I'm down $15,000. I'm not gonna make any excuses, but let's just throw this under the rug and start making some money. Everyone starts 40,000 chips. There's absolutely nothing that could have prepared me for this first hand. We all have like 150 big blinds. He limps under the gun. Peel 97 with hearts on the button. Folding's out of the question. I just call and we go four ways to a flop. That flop is 953. The player with the sticker left on his hat leads out for 1700, the size of the pot. Immediately, my mind goes to maybe he limped pocket kings or aces and he's trying to get a lot of money in right away. I have an easy call and the rest fold. And here comes the turn. The 10 of hearts. Now he bets big again, and it's always scary when someone uses the blue chips at the very beginning of the tournament. I'm still calling my flush draw. We need a heart on the river to crack his big over pair. Or a nine? It's the seven of diamonds. Unlike poker movies, you don't always have a straight flush. Hitting two pair though is a very good hand. And now, he puts me all in. I'm really concerned that he has pocket threes or pocket fives and this river is gonna cost me $2,700. I'm praying he's overvaluing aces or kings. I call. Yes, when they don't show right away, that's an amazing sign. Jack five offsuit. Um, maybe he thought he was big blind. Maybe this is just Asia poker. We double up in our very first hand. Let's go. Better start than we've had all week. Next hand, I get ace queen of diamonds. A tight player raised early position, a loose player called, and I re-raised. He grabs some calling chips, and then he grabs some more chips and puts in a re-raise. Feels pretty gross spot. I don't want to fold. I don't want to go all in. So I just make the call. There's 35,000 chips in the middle of the pot, and I have 28,000 left in my stack. We're not gonna win this hand, especially when he snap goes all in. I spent the next 30 minutes wondering if I fucked the hand up, and I just had to know. I saw him playing cash the same night, you can recognize his jacket, and he told me he four bet me with 9-7 of diamonds. And I got a nice motivation call on break. Love you guys. <laughs> not that you need a reason to try harder, but I sure have one. Next level, I have ace nine offsuit and putting a raise in and the big blind is the only caller. The flop comes jack 10 four. I'm not ready to put chips in the middle, so I check it back. And the turn is the eight of diamonds, a spicy card. And he leads out for 10,000 chips, which is two thirds of his stack. I've shown you guys, you know, a lot of bad plays on this channel. I know I'm not getting the right price to call for a draw, but I ain't drawn. I go all in and please don't roast me, but he has king nine. We get it in very good. Now we just need to hold. We don't have a crazy stack or anything, but we did make it to day two. <sighs> oh, I'm exhausted. <sighs> Met up with Jungle Man for a cash game session. This hand free flop, no, no good. We have a short stack. We're gonna try to spin it up tomorrow. I gotta get some sleep and uh, make some money tomorrow, please. <laughs> There's 111 players left. I have 15 big blinds and 47 make the money. I am tired of bubbling day twos of poker tournaments. When you're short. Every chip matters. This is Charlie who has a YouTube channel. He just posted a video with Fader Holt, so I'm not sure if he's getting coached by him. Regardless, I don't want to play against him, but he raises my big blind, and with King 4, I have to make a call. I really don't want to bust my first hand. Flop comes. 
843. I lead out for 6,000, and Charlie make the call. The turn is a 10. Yeah, I'm not comfortable at all. I don't think it's likely he has a 10, but I don't want to check and call and find out. I just keep betting small myself. And it works. Um, depends on the flop. Would I rather blind out or go all in with a weak hand? There's a raise in front of me. I have a super weak hand, but I'm still going all in. What do they say? Greater of two evils? This feels pretty evil. Things are going good, but the blinds keep going up and I still only have 10 big blinds. I've gone in with much worse than this. Even though we're 15 away from the money, I feel very confident in my holding and in my decision. When the small blind player calls, I'm doing fine. But then, the big blind player snap calls. Pocket nines versus small blinds king queen and the big blinds pocket queen. So I'm in shambles. We have an 81% chance of bubbling my third day two in a row. I'm that sicko that actually believes in nines coming. Two more cards. Last chance. Nope. It's not like I'm not okay busting a tournament, but I don't want to bust a tournament on day two right before the money every time. Like, just bust me out and make the money. One or the other, man. I'm wasting my time. One more try. Try. <laughs> One more try. Mm -hmm. What is fear? Uh, high roller? High roller. I look across this table and I'm afraid. Not of them, but of myself. I'm scared to make a mistake. Everyone starts with 100,000 chips. I'm calling, but not raising. I'm betting, but not continuing to barrel. After a couple hours, I was bleeding. I look down at the 80,000 chips in front of me now, and I make a decision. I might lose this tournament, but if I'm going to, I'm going to do it like a poker player. King, queen, there's a raise and a call. I re-raise. I'm on a roll. I open 7-5, big blind calls, and the flop comes king 7-7. 1800. And he min raises me. I make the call. The turn comes the five of clubs. We hit our full house, and he continues betting for 6,000. I call. Sitting here with the full house, things can't get much better. But they do. Now I just need to get the rest of his money. Oh, he's all in. We snap him off, he shows a king and we take down another pot. With 10-4 hearts, I raise and two call. The flop comes jack 4-4. Four, four. So this is what it feels like to run as good as chance corners. I bet 15,000 and the small blind player pushes his stack all in. We snap call, he shows king jack of hearts. He's near dead. In one level, I went from 80,000 chips to 280,000 chips. 10-4? 10 10-4? Four. 10 four. Feels like I can't lose. With ace queen, the hijack raises, and I put in a re-raise. He makes the call. I started the day with 100,000 chips, and there's 100,000 in the middle of this pot. And the flop comes. 
ace, ace, eight. I start with a small bet for 25,000. He raises me to 60,000. This is the biggest pot I've played all day. He definitely could have pocket eights, but besides that, I beat almost every hand. I use a time bank just to think it over before I make the call. 220,000 chips in the middle, heading to a king of spades on the turn. And he continues betting. 80,000 small for the pot, but it's still a big bet. The only thing I'm thinking about, a club hits the river, all in, do I fold or do I call? I don't wanna have to make that decision. I'm going all in. And if he does make the call and we win this pot, we'll be chip leading this tournament with over 800,000 in our stack. He decides to make the fold. Let's go! Easy money, easy game, ace queen, how to put it in there. We have two levels to go. We have 600,000 chips. We have double average stack. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. We bag 640,000 chips. That is good for ninth overall in this tournament out of the last 35 players left. Well above average stack, and we have about 40 big blinds coming back. The bad news is I have both chip leaders to my left, Yosuke Nakazawa. I've played with him all week. He's a great player. The good news, I have plenty of chips. Up here? Yep. Oh, I'm, the, I'm on the feature table? Yes. Holy shit. Did not know I was coming to the stream table. Pressure's on. There he is, Yosuke Nakazawa. First player at the table, which I can respect. This is Leo Pang. He's got 1.2 million in career earnings and he's chip leading this tournament. He's two to our left and Yosuke is to our direct left. So with the money bubble coming up, we just have to play tight. We just have to. Everything that's happened to me the last seven days has led up to this. It is game time. Hand number seven, I look down at ace five offsuit. I would always raise this hand, but in this spot, it feels like I can just fold. I stick with my default instinct. I put in a raise to 35,000. And Yosuke? Just makes the call. Whew. And now Leo Pang starts thinking, is this entire day gonna feel like this? Okay, thankfully he just makes the call, so we made it to the flop, and thank God we did. It comes ace five four with two hearts. I was just scared of these guys, and now I have no fear. I make it 75,000 to go. Yusuke makes the call, and Leo folds. The turn, the 10 of diamonds. When Yusuke checks to me, I bet one third of my stack, which is 175,000, ready to stack off by the river. But it doesn't come to that. We chip up from 640 to 750,000 chips sitting in the middle of the pack with nine players to go till the money. Two hands later, two players on the other tables bust and I look down at pocket queens. I came in knowing that the players to my left having bigger stacks than myself will re-raise me a lot, put a lot of pressure on me, Yosuke especially. And he delivers. I was expecting this, but I wasn't expecting the other two players to go into the tank. How many big hands are on this table? They both end up folding though. Now it's just about playing my best course of action going forward. In this spot, nine players from the money, starting as the ninth biggest stack in the tournament, going out would be devastating. But I'm not gonna play this slow. I have the third best hand in poker. My mind has been made up for 30 seconds now. Only thing left to do is say it. And he beats me into the pot. Truly sick to my core. I know this is part of the game. Typically, I really only tilt if I do something really bad at the table. Queens versus aces, it's a clear cooler, but this one already just hurts differently. We've already seen one of the queens discarded as well. Since I've flown to Asia, I've lost in Cambodia, I've lost in Taiwan, and the last tournament I played, all within 15 of the money. It's a curse at this point, and I can't get over it. Tells me he folded the queen before the flop comes out. We have one shot at this. He needs quite a lot of luck here, Frank C.
two outs away from having 80 big blinds and potentially the chip lead. Wow, that's gonna be big. 80 big blinds? Nah. Try 95 big blinds, 1.5 million chips, and we're leading the entire tournament. All right, this is the first time I've ever chip leaded a high roller. It's a 5K event. I've never chip leaded anything, honestly. I've never chip leaded before, maybe a cash game table. Heart's racing, boys. Heart's fucking racing. Let's go! We have absolute heaps. Our entire strategy has now changed. I've never been chip lead before, so I'm not exactly sure what I should do. Besides, I know I should play aggressive. 190, 190. I remember the feeling of being a mid stack on the bubble, so I'm sure he's feeling that same pressure. And we solidify our lead. Now sitting five away from the money, we get to open king seven of spades. Most of the players left are very good. This Australian pro, John Perry, is especially good. He's on the button with about 25 big blinds and he makes the call. Heads up to a flop. In the past two days, I've gotten the better of John every single time. And this is a very solid start. I bet ever so small and John makes the call. And there's the two of spades. Poker is a game of deception. I can apply a lot of pressure to him on the bubble. Instead, I hit the brakes. John checks it back in the river, the four of clubs. Take a look at that board. There's a lot out there. I want him to think that I'm just trying to buy the pot. I go all in. This puts John in a very tough decision. He goes through every single time bank he has before he decides to make the call. And wow. we will be losing John Perry. We have a two to one chip lead on the second biggest stack. We're on the stone bubble. So I'm not sure if I should open any two or, or what to do. Okay, no one heard me. Go! Okay, go, go, go! Life really does come full circle. Yesterday, I was praying to make it through the bubble. Today, I'm hoping it never ends. The moment finally comes. The bubble bursts and I cash my first Asian Poker Tour tournament. If I can hold on, I won $160,000. Everyone moved seats, but I stayed on the featured table. There's only one stack similar to mine, and that's Lin Chin An. I didn't notice at the time, but he's the seventh most winning poker player in the entire country, and I get the best of him. It was back-to-back -back hands. I had two pair of kings and nines, he had two pair of sevens and nines, and I win a 400,000 chip pot. And then again, this time I have queen jack suited, he calls me on the flop, I get there on the river, and take down back-to-back -back 400k pots. He's down to 1 million, which is about 25 big blinds and opens in the cutoff. This is Chan to his left. He shows a lot of emotion in his face, which we can use to our advantage. He makes the call on the button. I like down a king nine offsuit in the big blind. I make the call, or three ways to a flop. We flop Jin. In poker, when your opponents are short stack, having top pair with a really good kicker is enough to go for it all. I check, Lin Chin on, that's 200,000, which is a big bet. And Chatsun, hmm, makes the call to his left. The only thing bothering me is why do you bet so big? We're four away from the final table. This spot is a session defining spot. The only thing I ask myself is this, does big bet mean overpair, or does big bet also mean worse 9x holdings? I come to a decision. It needs to be one big empire. We didn't want to see a quick call. When the hands are revealed, we have a cooler flop. This is the biggest pot I've played of the entire tournament, 2.4 million. And we only have 12% chance to win. I had one over him in the smaller pots, but this is the one that matters. The turn, six of clubs. That's one less card we can hit. 
tough spot. Yeah, right. I mean, it would have been a big fold. It would have been a really big fold. I would have done anything to hold on to the chip lead. But that's not how poker works sometimes. We're down to a less comfortable 20 big blind stack. So we all just switched tables. I'm at 935,000 chips. That is good for 18.7 big blinds. This is a anyone's game. When you're short stack, the big blind is such an important position. We go rotation after rotation and we can't pick up a hand to win. Blinds went up, we have 7.5 bigs. Prettiest hand on the new table, eight seven hearts, but facing a raise, we have to fold. We have five big blinds left. When it folds to me and I see queen four of spades at this stack depth, that's aces. I go all in. Andy folds. Now with East in, slam dunk all in. But this time, no, everyone folds again. This is pure survival mode. Someone just busted, meaning there's 10 players left, and now someone's all in on my table. If this guy calls and busts, we're at the final table. Blinds just went up. So I have five big blinds in the big blind. You know what that means. If you don't know what that means, I'm gonna be all in. It's a bad situation. The next hand I get dealt is extremely important. And we peel. Queen five of diamonds. Above average for sure. Small blind goes all in. He could have any two. I make the call. He has king six. This is the final table bubble. Everything comes down to this. a diamond. We finish in 10th place for a total cash of $13,200. I thought for a second there that I, I had it. And to be so close to it, but to not have it, really, really sucks. I'm right there. You can see me, I'm right there. And that's okay. I think this is great, actually. 10th place in a high roller is gonna be an amazing starting point for an epic adventure that I can't wait to be a part of. Make sure to watch part one if you missed it.